1922, King Tut's tomb was discovered, and people all over the world were fascinated by its treasures. I hit the mark. When I make these videos, I pick and choose the articles that appeals to me. But sometimes my subscribers see a story that was featured in my picture that I didn't talk about. Therefore, before we begin today's newspaper, I'm going to catch some of those missed articles for them. If you see something that I didn't actually read, but you noticed in the picture, Feel free to comment below, and I'll do my best to catch it up. A hundred killed by tornadoes in Midwest. Storms take toll of life and property. Texas, Kansas, Missouri hit by twisters. Death list runs high. Rescue work begins. Kansas City, Missouri, May 9th. Upward of 100 persons were killed, about 1,000 injured, and property damage of more than 4 million was done by a tornado which originated in Texas. After the tornado on May 7th, on May 9th, the wrath of the elements, after giving the Southwest and Middle West a brief breathing spell, swept down again over the weekend leaving a trail of death and devastation in the wake of tornadoes and high winds in Missouri, Kansas, Texas, and Iowa. 55 persons were reported dead tonight in the four states. Canberra, Australia. The Duke of York and 500 other subjects toasted the king in orangeade and lemonade at the official luncheon held in connection with the formal dedication of Australia's new federal capital here today. The absence of vinous liquids was due to the law making the federal district strictly dry. Presenting today's paper, the Seattle Post-Intelligencer, dated May 11, 1927. Babes used to peddle moonshine. Moonshining in the state of Washington is on the increase and has been for two years. More liquor is made, sold, and consumed now than at any time since Prohibition. This is due to the fact that the smuggling has decreased to 75% and thus domestic manufacture has gone up. Moonshiners are using boys and girls as young as 13 years as hirelings not only to make, but to peddle moonshine. Get your portable phonograph from Harold Weeks. Outing time is here at last, but remember that every trip can be twice as enjoyable if you take music with you. You'll find all the best of the portable phonographs here, all specially selected to give the maximum in good musical reproduction. Terms as easy as a dollar a week. Get yours today. The Brunswick Shop, 2nd Avenue at Union. They stick to your ribs. Spare ribs. Sauerkraut, 35 cents. With soup and pie, 50 cents. Mrs. Harry Stahl, original German restaurant, 1205 4th Avenue. Lead flies in dope battle. Boston, May 10th. A pistol battle on the deck of the Far East steamship Malayan Prince at her dock in South Boston followed the seizure of $100,000 worth of opium and the rest of three Chinese today. 
Reaching the deck of the Malayan prince, the guards were greeted by a salvo of pistol shots. The custom men replied. The battle on the deck continued for some time. At least 30 shots were fired. Finally, the boatswain was captured in the forecastle. Patience and pint measure means four bits. It's an airing earwig that has no commercial turn, which means ultimately that an earwig in the hand is worth half dozen in the rosebush, and a pint of the pests is the price of one ticket to the baseball game. Allow us to introduce Seattle's infant industry. Not recorded perhaps in the commercial journals, but enthusiastically heralded by the younger generation of the city. It's no other than the trapping of earwigs, menace of the horticultural world. Down at the city's health department, they're paying 50 cents a pint for the captive earwigs, Seattle grown. Last summer, the city council appropriated $1,000 as bounty for earwigs. Of this amount, 500 was paid out last season, and 500 still remains in the fund. One small ambitious boy combining a flair for finance and a cunning hand in capturing earwigs last summer earned $30 in bounty money. Any method of trapping may be used, but the earwigs must be bona fide Seattle residents, immigration laws being applicable to the foreigners. Famous Troublemakers Dr. Slasham McGarver, discoverer of the appendix. Appendix hunting has become the chief sport among doctors. A lone, unprotected appendix has no chance at all against an enthusiastic physician. There is hardly an appendix left, and the doctors, in their anxiety to seek new appendixes to conquer, are operating on clothing store dummies. <laughs> 